This is King James personal copy of the King James Bible. Today we're going to talk about the Bible. Now, no book in human history has arguably affected humankind as much as the Bible. Painters have painted of it, musicians have sung of it, and philosophers have argued for and against it for centuries. What is the Bible in the modern day? The original manuscripts of the apostles and the prophets that wrote the Bible were in Greek, in Hebrew, or Aramaic, and they're 2,000 years old. But when we sing of the Bible or we quote it in our movies, we're not quoting Greek or Hebrew, we're generally quoting the English King James Version from 1611. However, in a heavily digitized world, many of us don't even have a paperback version of the Bible anymore. So why would we have one of the original hard covers? Well, that's exactly what I sought. And there's no better place to find an original King James Version than Reed Moon's rare books in Provo, Utah. So I grabbed Quaco and Brad, my co-hosts, and set out for Salt Lake City International Airport to see if I couldn't get my hands on one of the original King James versions of the Bible. Fortunately, Reed was gracious enough to give us a tour of his collection, show us indeed not just a King James Bible, but the King James Bible, along with some other really cool stuff. Enjoy. This is a first edition King James. Very few of these in private hands. But what a lot of people don't know or it never dawned on them is the original King James has the Apocrypha. Mm. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, so that's first edition King James, but I have a King James Bible in here in the protective case that is more valuable. This is King James personal copy of the King James Bible. Dude. <laughs> that is crazy. You, want, you can't go to the British Museum and see that. Why? They have their inventory online. They have no King James Bible bound for King James. They don't have it because you have it here. In <laughs> Provo, <Utah. laughs> it's in Provo. Yeah. The Royal Book Binder, John Bateman, bound this. I mean, it's... Wow. So, that, I mean, that's a taste. Hold on, hold on. Before you put it away. Before you put it away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say I've touched it. Um, you were going to show them the, 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 oh, okay. Sorry. I forgot. I don't want to, you got to work your way to it. I know. I know. It's a five course meal. Sorry. <laughs> this is something most people will never see in their lifetime. It's a Hebrew grammar book by Satius. Dude. Do you, you get where this is going? Yeah. So Joseph Smith says, hey, we need to learn Hebrew, School of the Prophets. Where are the first meetings held? School of the Prophets. In the, the top upper of the, top of the, William the general store, yeah. No King Wheat. No King This is No King Whitney's copy of the Hebrew grammar book. This is the wow. book used in the School of the Prophets. Wow. This is where they find this word, N-A-V-U, Navu. Navu comes from this book, which means beautiful. It's right here. That, you haven't seen that one. No, that's awesome. <laughs> Holy crap, that is wicked. Well, righteously wicked. Oh, man, I'm botching 70s Gen X. <laughs> Gen X speak here, you know. Wow. Okay. A little off subject, but this is a first edition of The Hobbit. Whoa. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Wow. But if I'm pulling it out of the vault, something's going on. Yes, it is signed uh -oh. by J.R.R. Tolkien. Oh, there is not a copy of this available for sale in the world. <laughs> oh, shit. Sell for a million dollars. Uh, I think it'd be a little bit more than that, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that I have kind of my pride and joy? I have at least one set of scriptures 
that belong to every president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Wow. Name any one, and I will show it to you, except Nelson. He still using his. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, John Taylor. Oh. Okay, John Taylor. Um, that will be over in this one. I never imagined books to be in vaults. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep them safe. So you, you don't wear like special gloves. You just, you just handle it. Oh. That is the number one comment I get on TikTok. You're not using white gloves. The latest, I mean, landmark study has shown that gloves have done more damage than they ever prevented. Gloves mm -hmm. are 100% no-no. Nobody uses gloves. Smithsonian doesn't use gloves. British Museum doesn't use gloves for books. Photographs, sure, because oils can interact with the chemicals. But books, you cannot hold a book like that. I do a video on it showing. Here, here. I'm trying to grab this book and it just slips with glove. Without mm -hmm. a glove, pick it right up. Oh. And people say, well, what about the oils? Where did everybody come up with that? What scientific study ever showed that? None. It just kind of caught on, people said. But even that, landmark study, no appreciable damage has ever been done with the oils of your hands. The rule is clean, dry hands. Wash your hands. The oils take, even if the oils did something, it takes an hour or two. Oh. I think you may not be able to open up if you could get just that. Sorry, my hands okay. are Okay. There's a little mix of stuff in here. <laughs> stuff and books. <laughs> and John Taylor in the same. This is not an endorsement of Liberty Safes. No. Oh, no. Oh, you have to tell them what the thing is. Okay, there's only two surviving eggs. But John Taylor is called to translate, well, to publish the Book of Mormon. He doesn't translate it, but he does take credit. That was a little issue with the guy, but <laughs> with the guy who actually translated it, and he, a guy named um, Trump, uh, Bolton, uh, which I actually have his, co his copy right there, but from John Taylor to Parley P. Pratt. So John Taylor gives this to Parley P. Pratt, copy of the Book of Mormon. Oh, yeah. so that's both a Taylor and a Pratt. Yeah. Yeah. That's Heber cool. J. Grant. Heber J. Grant. Now, what are we playing? Whack-a-mole? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Obviously, one. we're going to end with asking Joseph Smith. That's <laughs> the one we all know. So in 1920, they do a new edition of the scriptures. Who's on the scripture committee? Talmadge, Joseph Fielding Smith. They finish it and they go, we should probably give a copy to the president of the church. So Talmadge gives this copy to Heber J. Grant. This is Heber J. Grant's copy of the Book of Mormon. Also, his Doctrine and Covenants has three paragraphs in his personal Doctrine and Covenants. It says this, more than any other book, I have loved the Doctrine and Covenants. Whoa, who said that? Heber J. Grant. Interesting. He said, more than any other book, I have loved the Doctrine and Covenants. The teachings of our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ have been an inspiration to me since my youth. At paragraph two, at the age of 15, I read carefully and prayerfully the Book of Mormon. And there came into my heart an abiding testimony of the truthfulness of that book. Paragraph three, I thank God that I learned about the life of Nephi in my youth, because his life has inspired mine for more good than that of any other person save the Redeemer of the world. That's in President Grant Scripture. And nobody knows that because his biographers do not have access to his scriptures. That's amazing. I just, so if you go to like some LDS academic conference, they're all high and mighty talking about how much they know. You can be like, yeah, I'm the guy who owns it. <laughs> 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 I can tell if you're lying because I can go look and see. Like that's yeah, the yeah. So probably one of my favorite sets Spencer W. Kimball. He has marked it up, made notes, tipped in pages. I mean, 
here. Okay, let me see. Does he have the list? After W. Kimball. Notes around like priesthood stuff? Yeah. <laughs> so this is his set of scriptures from 1938 to 1955. Why well, do I don't know that? Because his other set is right over there in 1955. <laughs> <laughs> um Moses 7, where it talks that blackness came upon the children of Canaan. Really? Is that, sh he does a question mark. Question mark. Is this, he, it's a question mark to him 40 years before the revelation. What? That's insane. Oh, you got to show him the list in front. That's in his other one. Oh, okay. Did you write anything next to Jacob 3 9? Do you know? Mm. Look it up. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No. 